When we start studying probability, there can sometimes be a lot of information that we may need to organise and present, and it can become messy. Fortunately, Venn diagrams enable us to organise and present information visually, so we're able to easily see the relationships between one or multiple sets of data. In this video, we're going to take a look at what some of the basic structures of a Venn diagram is, and how we can fill out the numerical values into a Venn diagram. So, let's begin. So let's begin by considering a hypothetical situation where we've surveyed a group of 30 people. We asked this group whether they play basketball or football, whether they played both or whether they didn't play either. Those that responded that they played basketball are these people that have a B that sit above them. Those people that respond that they played only football have these Fs that are sitting above or below them. Those people that uh, told us that they played both have a B slash F by their faces. And those people that don't have anything by them indicated that they didn't play either sport. Now, before we get into how we fill out a Venn diagram, let's pull some information from this survey. First of all, let's have a look at how many of these people played basketball. So we've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So we have eleven people here that played basketball. How many of these people play football? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen of these people play football. How many of these people play both basketball and football? So that's our B slash F. So we have one here, two, three, four, five. Now, the information that I've recorded here can be very useful for when we start filling out a Venn diagram. An example of a Venn diagram, the type of Venn diagram we're going to use here today, is what I've drawn up already. One of the things that you'll notice is this Greek letter here, known as epsilon. The Greek letter represents our universe inside of this rectangle. Our universe is going to have all the data from the people that we surveyed. So our universe is essentially the people that we surveyed. Now, within our universe, you'll notice that there's two circles here that overlap each other. The circle on the left, which I've indicated to be circle A, is going to represent all the people that played basketball. The circle over the right here, which I've labelled as circle B, will represent all those people that played football. But what if someone was to play both sports? Well, they're represented here in this area where the circles overlap. So let's start there. Now, back before, we counted the number of people that played both basketball and football. We found that five people did. So we record that as five people played both basketball and football. Now, as soon as I explain that, I frequently hear people go, well, that was easy. So in this space over here then, I just put 11 because there's 11 people that play basketball. Well, that's not quite right. This circle, yes, does include the total number of people that play basketball. So in total, we should have 11 people within this circle that play basketball. However, we've already represented five of those people because they also play football. That means that we need to represent the remaining people that only play basketball. We could come back over here and count them. Or we could just look at how many played of our 11 people played football as well and subtract that. So 11 take 5 means there's 6 people that only play basketball. And we represent those six people just here. To check, we should add these two values together and come back to how many people total played basketball. Six plus five is 11, so we've filled it out correctly. Now, let's take a look at the football circle. We know that in total, there should be 14 people that play football. 
we've already recorded five of those people because they also play basketball. So if we go 14 subtract five, which is nine, we know that nine more people play only football. To check, if we go nine plus five, which equals 14, that should be the total number of people that play football. Now, there is one more group of people within our universe that needs to be represented. And that's those people that don't play either football or basketball. Now, we could go back and count them, but because we know that there are 30 people in total within our universe, we can count how many people have already been represented within the previous categories. So, we're saying that six people only played basketball. There were five people that played both sports. So six plus five is 11. There are also nine more people that played only football. So 11 plus nine is 20. So if we subtract 20 from 30, which is 10, we know that 10 people don't play either basketball or football. And we represent them outside of these circles, but within our universe inside of this rectangle. So let's review. Within this rectangle here, it contains all the data that we're representing. We often use the Greek letter epsilon, which is written here, to represent this. In this entire left circle is the total number of people that play basketball. If we want to know what that total is, we need to add all these numbers together inside of our circle. In the entire right circle is the number of people that play football. Like basketball, to find that total number out, we need to add all the numbers together inside that circle. In this space where the two circles overlap, we represent the total number of people that play both basketball and football. So what that means is, represented in this space here, is the people that only play basketball. And represented in this space here, is the people that only play football. Now, there's one more group of people that need to be represented, and they are outside of our two circles, but within our universe of the rectangle. And that's those people that don't play either basketball or football. Now, to finish, I'd like you to have a go for yourself. Here is a group of 20 people that were surveyed whether they played badminton or tennis. If they played tennis, I've indicated this by putting a T above or below their little face. If they played badminton, I've indicated this by putting a little B above or below their face. If they played both badminton and tennis, I've indicated this by putting a B slash T above or below their face. And if they don't play either, that means that they don't have anything recorded next to their face. So now I would like you to try and create your own Venn diagram that represents this data.